Hi, how you doing? This is Doug, and uh, this is my Assassin Semi Maiden flight. Actually, to be honest with you, I uh, went out and flew it last night. It was getting pretty dark. I got home late from work, and I, uh, well, it's Wednesday, and I uh, finished it uh, Sunday, and it was just too windy to try to fly it for a first time, so uh, last night I just had to go out and try it. And I uh, actually made a couple mistakes I'll point out to you. When I threw it the first couple times, first four times, I held it with my finger on top like this and my thumb underneath. And when I threw it, I, I was trying to release it so that the nose went straight out and up, but that didn't happen. It actually spun the plane around and I just crashed right off the bat. Uh, I subsequently, on my fifth try, held it with my thumb on the top and you'll see the guys in the video launching it with holding it out here and that's when they've got a fin on the outside end um, but since I don't have that I was able to grab it right here and I put wingtip skid protectors underneath here on the bottom one on the nose and one on each wingtip so when I land on asphalt I'm not going to scratch off the uh, laminate um, but anyway so that gives me a little handhold right there and my four or fifth try I flung it out there and boy the thing just took off and you got to be quick getting your hand around onto the controller because you've got to well, you, I'll show you out here how to do that a little bit better but um, it handled really well right out of the, right off the bat I did center my gravity real well and uh, it turned out that was pretty good uh, the biggest mistake I made like I said it was getting dark and I plowed into a fence over there uh, top of a fence with my right wing tip there's a metal bar goes across this six foot top of this six well, it's a five foot chain link fence and I smashed it and um, I'll tell you there's not a mark a ding a scratch or a tear anywhere on the plane can't even tell I hit anything so I'm pretty impressed by that um, I did um, want to tell you that the build is not easy if you've never worked with a laminate before uh, it's pretty tricky Getting the temperature right, the elevons are a lot thinner than the bulk part of the wing. And the, this part of the wing will dissipate the heat of the iron better than the elevons. So really try and stay with your iron cooler at first. Because um, I, I got a lot of elephant skin looking stuff on the uh, elevons. And my wings aren't exactly perfect. I've got some air bubbles that I need to knock out. Uh, I did knock out some of them by lancing the laminate with a, an X-Acto knife and bursting the bubbles and then re-ironing it and that worked pretty good most of the places. Um, but enough about that. I'll uh, give a little bit more of a review later and um, let's go fly. Okay, I've done all my pre-flight checks. Everything works. And I hit that goal post over there with my Sport Cub the other day and uh, as you can see it kind of knocked the heck out of that goal post. Um, Okay, I, I made that up. I did hit the goalpost, but it didn't do that to it. And then that fence line over there, that's where I, uh, I zonked the top of the fence. So I'm going to go ahead and give this thing a fling. And hopefully it'll go well. There's nobody out here. I can't hit anybody. Uh, so let's, uh, let's see if I can get this. I've got it set at five minutes. Okay, got it going. And it's uh, just a little bit nose heavy. I'm having to pull back on the throttle a little bit. But with that paint scheme I've got on there, the tape scheme I should say, it's pretty easy to tell if I'm going I've got a little back elevator right there. Okay, let's bring her around, try to do a loop here. There we go. I'm finding it's a little bit different trying to determine my orientation without having a tail on the thing and that's just going to come with practice. 
Thus the lighting isn't that good. Another loop. Okay. And it's a little squirrely. Boy, it's very responsive. I might have to set my expos on it a little bit. Okay, let's bring it down low level here. I'm not so concerned about hitting a goal post with this thing, because after I hit that fence last night, it is pretty durable. Okay, come around and try to do a barrel roll here, see what happens. Little wild on that. Do that again. Turn up my aileron expos, see if I can get it to spin a little fast. I've set high and low rates. Oh yeah, that rolled over very nice. Handles very similar to a regular plane. And I'm going to bring her down. I don't want to run my battery out and screw up the first time. So, All right. Okay. Well, that worked out pretty good. And like I said, I did throw it a few times last night and screwed up. But the real trick is getting your power on. I had it on about three-quarter speed. Uh, three-quarter throttle and um, trick is getting your other hand onto the aileron in case you have a little bit of a bad throw so let's go ahead and toss it up again since I am an Oregon State Beaver fan I decided to decorate it with Oregon State colors get old black and orange and uh, do some flight control checks right left up down prop a little bit of a spin all right and I have taped down my wires here with some electrical tape and I'm tucking, eh, that's a little bumpy there. Oh well, I'm not gonna worry about it too much right now, but I might as well, might as well fix it. Don't really like that wire dangling down there so much. And I also left my antenna wire up, sticking out. I've got the other antenna wire sticking down in the trough there, and then this one's sticking up, so. And that is just my transmitter beeping at me, telling me I'm out of time, and I already know that, so. All right, again, I'm going to go with a five-minute job here. Oh, shut up. See if I can get another good toss. And I'm finding it's easier to put my, my transmitter on my hip when I throttle up. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that. Got a full moon popping up over the mountains there. That means the sun just went down. So let's try this again. Got to get a little bit better throw and not get so much spin into it. There we go. Getting a little hard to see it on the camera, I think, but Kind of get the idea, I'll come down here and do a full speed pass. It's not quite three quarter throttle right there. Sure looks cool up in the air though. I didn't mean to do that second loop, but hey, you know, I'll take it. Watch out for that fence over there. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go up a little bit and kill power and see what happens. See how she glides. Okay, that's dead throttle. Yeah, she glides pretty good. Absolutely no wind to keep it up in the air going into a headwind, so pretty sunset too. I'm going to work on getting a camera mount on this thing. I'm going to go back to low rates here. It's going to take a little while to get used to, but that's all right. That's part of the fun of it. 
be a little easier to see what I'm doing in broad daylight too. See if I can get the moon and the plane in the same shot. Boy, that sky is pretty. Kind of wish I'd have brought three batteries, but I didn't. Okay, here we go. Whoop. Okay, All right. Here. I got to get a good throw. I wasn't even thinking about cutting those corners either. I just thought about leaving them. Well, they say to do it, so. They just said it look for looks. That's it. Uh, th this clip corner is for looks. Oh, is that? I thought it's it was just the, the wing right there. No, this right is here. this is to do something aerodynamically, and this is huh. for just for looks. So probably so it doesn't have that sharp corner that gets dent, that gets dented or something, you know. Maybe so. All right, here we go. Good throw. Almost. Didn't quite get my hand onto the other part throw. soon enough. Got to get the throw correct. Keep the right wing down, nose up. There we go. Boy, it doesn't want to, it doesn't really seem like it's going anywhere, does it? Oh, there we go. Oh, don't get around in the sun there. Okay, I took that weight off the nose and it's flying pretty good. Better loop. Well, I'll tell you the high rates sure make it a lot easier to barrel roll too. Hard to control inverted too. It's a lot harder than a regular plane. I think I have the balance pretty good now. See how it kind of wiggles back and forth too? Real easy. Yeah. I think it's so cool. It looks neat, doesn't it? But I'll tell you, you get a side profile like right there, it's a, it's a lot different than a regular plane just because you cannot reference the uh, rudder in the tail section. Yeah, I want to do a high speed low pass here. Me and my big chicken self doesn't want to get too low to the ground though. Hey, but you know what? If I crash, I crash, huh? <laughs> Yippee. All right, time to come in for a skid. Watch out for that tree. Right on. Good. So after having flown this for five or six flights now, so, no, excuse me, about 10 flights, um, I'll give you a little bit of a review and you can take it for what it's worth. Um, first of all, the, the setup that I, I purchased was, uh, this is the CF2812 motor with a seven by four prop. And I've got a 25 to 30 amp ESC in it. This is an orange, orange RX receiver. The servos I picked up at my local hobby shop, uh, they're 13 gram metal geared servos, um, which is pretty darn close to the 14s that uh, they actually suggest. Um, for my striping, I used Ultra Coat trim. It comes in, uh, it's a self adhesive back. Uh, peel and stick. It comes in a 5 by 36 inch strip 
and you can just cut it into the widths that you want and it comes in a multitude of colors and it's really pretty easy to work with and um, I don't think I disturbed the center of balance on the plane too much I wound up being 19.2 ounces altogether which isn't too out of line considering this can hold a 13 ounce vegetable juice can I have set my high and low rates um, and my expos my low rates are at 70 percent with 20 percent expo and my high rates are 100 percent at uh, 25 percent expo and low rates I'm getting three eighths of an inch up and down movement with the elevons and aileron well they're the same and about a half inch so I didn't really increase the movement that much um, battery flying time I am using g-force batteries these are 1300 milliamp and they also are uh, 30c and I started out at a five minute flying time and through some experimentation uh, yesterday I exceeded my 70 percent depletion rate that I like to work with um, so I can fly comfortably full speed for seven to eight minutes right in that neighborhood and in case you're wondering about how to figure your depletion uh, first of all with lipo batteries you really don't want to deplete them more than 70 to 75 percent your batteries will last longer and uh, so what exactly does that mean I made up this little chart for you in case you're not familiar with it now, for example a 1300 milliamp battery a discharge of 10 percent is 130 milliamps and then 70 percent seven times the 130 is going to give you 910 milliamps for a 70 percent depletion rate of 910 milliamps and then I've got the information for a 2200 milliamp battery here as well and the particular charger I have when I go to recharge a battery shows me and tells me how many milliamps I reload um, so if I don't exceed if I yesterday I flew uh, full throttle and I got up into about uh, for eight minutes and I got up into about the 1100 milliamp uh, range which is more than I like um, so that'll give you an idea of depletion rates on batteries and try to keep it around 70 to 75 percent and I'll tell you this is a really durable little booger as I you, uh, mentioned before I cracked into a uh, uh, top of a fence really pretty hard I have nosed in and smashed into uh, the ground and bounced up in the air four feet a couple of times with absolutely no damage and the reason I have my sport cub right here this dent right here this is where I hit the goal post and uh, there's just no getting that out and this is the assassin wing where I hit the fence and really there's just absolutely not a mark from it and one thing I wanted to note I do fly off of asphalt or land around asphalt uh, frequently so what I have done is add these wingtip protectors and I have found out the hot glue I use doesn't particularly stick well to this laminate so I have uh, subsequently uh, uh, used an epoxy to glue them in and then something else I have found out that's what the top of one of the skid protectors is going to look like after that's just after three landings I believe it was two or three and you can see where it's already flattening out so I have added just by cutting some pieces of aluminum that I had I've uh, added some protection to those so hopefully they won't wear out quite as fast or hopefully not at all but uh, and again the I've epoxied all those on and uh, I don't know why my hot glue doesn't stick to this laminate too well my velcro strap also came loose so I epoxied that last night um, so all in all I think this is going to be a really fun plane to fly and one of the main reasons I don't have to worry about hurting it um, for example this sport cub if I crash up the wings well when I hit the goal post I split the wing underneath here in a couple of different places and I was fortunate I didn't have more damage um, however 50 something dollars for to replace these wings 50 something dollars to replace that fuselage uh, the parts game in the model industry is just ridiculously expensive um, you can fix a lot of stuff but at the same time man I can buy a whole new plane right here for the same price as that wing so 
and the fuselage. So um, I recommend these as for a first time flyer or possibly the Albatross or Pelican. Um, this EPP foam and the way they're constructed, constructed, Lee has come up with an excellent design for durability. And uh, I think they have some really good choices for first planes if you're just starting out. And if you're an experienced pilot, it'll just give you a chance to push the envelope a little bit and have a lot of fun. And someday I might be able to even fly one of those guys. Okay, well, maybe not that big, but, uh, you know, it's going to take some acclimation, uh, getting used to how it flies and its flying characteristics. But all in all, I give this two thumbs up. And I'm sure that I'm already looking at <laughs> what my next one is going to be. Maybe a Titan. Uh, maybe a Hercules or something like that because uh, I, I really like in this thing. So I hope all of this uh, information helped you out and um, go out there and fly. <laughs> Yippee. All right, time to come in for a skid. <laughs>